after university, I had a, a kind of a ill-advised foray to, to France. Oh, yes. I was, well, I was trying to learn French even back then. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to do something cool and cultural. And after finishing a degree in English literature, I didn't really have awesome job opportunities <laughs> immediately <laughs> jumping out at me. Right. Now, this is a very Gen X thing to do. I mean, the characters in the book yeah. are actually doing something rather similar. They Although, don't know what to do with themselves. To be fair, they have quit lucrative jobs in order to run off. Right. They just were boring and soul-sucking jobs, but they were stable and well-paid jobs. You know, I could have had a boring soul-sucking job in Canada. Mm -hmm. Instead, I got one in Paris. <laughs> Very briefly. Okay. One day I noticed, I don't know how I found out about it, that Douglas Copeland himself was doing an event at the Canadian Embassy in Paris. Oh. So I go. I go to this event. Now, the Canadian Embassy is a big fancy building. The doors are like splayed open and I'm like feeling very much like an imposter, like going here. Okay. I'm, I'm an old hand now at literary events, but at this age I don't think I'd really gone to many. Sure, it can be intimidating. Very intimidating. So I walk in there and there's champagne and there's hors d'oeuvres. I'm like terrified of talking to anybody because everybody there is like in their 40s. Right. Douglas Copeland is sitting at a table and there's another guy sitting at a table and it is not at all clear who this other guy is, but they talk for 15 minutes and it is not at all clear what they're talking about. <laughs> they were making vague references to art, an art project. Never was it explained what the, <laughs> what the art project was or what it was about or anything. Wow. It was so, it sounds like a nightmare. It was of. another detail. I <laughs> was wearing my work clothes. Like I was always very, I had to very carefully iron my shirts every day. Yeah. And it was like a lot of work. And I, and I remember this one detail with Douglas Copeland, who's in his early forties at the time. Yeah. He was wearing this ridiculously <laughs> wrinkled uh, sports jacket. Okay. <laughs> So I remember thinking, this guy literally just pulled a jacket out of his backpack and put it on. Like he didn't even like prepare for this at all. Like, he, like the two guys yeah. were not even, they had not even decided what they were going to do. <laughs> and meanwhile, so, he didn't even iron his shirt. He didn't even iron his shirt. In <laughs> retrospect, as I said, they just were not prepared. It's easy enough. People, people like have to rush to a lecture or to give a talk and they just, you know, they didn't have time to prepare. They turn around, they go, okay, well, clearly they ran out of gas. And they go, oh, are there any questions? Like, <laughs> after 15 minutes. <laughs> this is the most the laziest Did slacker. Did anyone ask a question? Like, what are you talking about? Naomi, nobody asks a question, okay? <laughs> Again, naive Aaron, 20, 22 years old. You asked a question. I stand up to ask a question. And I think I'm helping. Yeah, right. I, I, I stand up and I say, Something along these lines. It's like, so I, I've been here listening <laughs> and I, I actually don't, I can't really figure out what you're talking about. Like, are you, are you promoting an art show that you've done together? You said that. Yes. Nice. Copeland was totally offended, but he gets mad at me. His like face like scrunched up like, yeah. like angrily. And he says in an, like an aggressively joking tone, this poor guy sitting here the whole time had no idea what was going on. It's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he knows very well. Again, in retrospect, he knows very well that he's prepared nothing. Yeah, yeah. And they've told us nothing yeah, interesting. Yeah. And nobody cares because they don't understand and they have no questions. I guess he assumed that everyone already knew like about his project because he was so famous that he didn't even need to explain could, it. Could there be anything more? First of all, slacker. <laughs> Second of all, like self-importance. Yeah, I mean. And this is. These are some of the worst qualities yeah. of Gen X, right? Right.